Thank you for joining me for an in-depth look at the chart of the day. And what I want to highlight is just how unique the recent market action has been within history. Now, we saw in the Dow a 10% decline in less than two weeks. That's not unprecedented. It is unusual. The blue lines on the chart highlight the previous instances of this. And of course, on a chart, if we can draw a line, we can test it. Well, it happened 17 times since 1950. And there were multiple occasions, but what I did in order to test it was I assumed that you bought the day that the 10% decline was recognized and you sold one month later. So repetitive signals then that clustered would be eliminated from our process. And one month later, after these 17 previous signals, the Dow's been higher 58.8% of the time. That's not statistically different from a random entry where you just buy and hold for a month. The Dow would be higher 60% of the time. So the big drop doesn't really tell us whether to expect a rally or a decline from here. But what's unusual is this week we saw the first time that occurred while the Dow was above its 200-day moving average. In the past, the 17 other instances came when the Dow was below its 200-day moving average. In other words, it was in a downtrend. And when we're in a downtrend, we expect increased volatility. We expect large moves both up and down. You may have seen those studies. If you missed the 10 best days in the market, you would have missed all of the gains for the last 90 years or whatever. The financial advisor is trying to sell you with the scary chart. The reality is if you missed those days, you sidestepped bear markets entirely. And the volatility is just a characteristic of bear markets. That means we don't know what's next. Was this downdraft that we saw truly unique? And I believe it was. The exchange traded products on the inverse volatility, the VIX index, um, XIV being one of the ETNs that were traded. And there's ETFs and ETNs. It's a crowded space and it's a crowded trade. Bloomberg estimates somewhere between a one and a half and two trillion dollars is tied up trading volatility. Much of it was on the wrong side of the market on Monday. Now, I've been warning for a long time that the volatility EPFs were where we were going to get a disaster. We got it. Many of those funds are now gone. But the problem was they have to rebalance daily. And everyone on Wall Street knew this. So 15 minutes before the market closed, you could spot the volume appearing in the volatility products. And on Monday, just the large uh, firms that are on the other side of the trade just held back. They knew they could get better prices later. They pushed too far, the funds collapsed. That created the chaos. Now I'm really busily researching where the next disaster is gonna be. I think I know, but I'm confirming some data and I'll share that with you as soon as I can confirm the next trouble spot to watch. The most likely scenario looking ahead, that 10% pullback that we saw relieve the overbought pressure. We're no longer the longest market without a 5% pullback. We've had that. I think that's set up an extended rally. Fundamentals, economic growth, both support a bull market. Now, technicals do as well. That's all I have for this chart, but I'd say we're going to see some continued backing and filling in the short term, but this sets up a long-term bull market. Thanks for joining me.